I know they're important, but why do bats have to be so effing creepy all the time? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, they, they ain't effing creepy. Here's the thing. You encounter bats at a time when you're feeling a sense of foreboding and creepiness because night is falling or something like that. And um, when you get to know bats, they really aren't this way. Um, for one thing, you probably don't realize that there are something like a thousand species of bats on Earth. That's a large number of different kinds of creatures. That's almost a quarter of mammal species. And they are tremendously diverse. Some of them are even quite beautiful, quite easy to relate to. You've probably seen flying foxes from the old world. Those are fruit bats and flower bats from the old world that look like dogs, except hung upside down. Um, yeah, there's one. Can you put this on the screen? Hmm. Yeah, that's a pteropodid. Now, this is a non-echolocating bat uh, in a family that includes some very large creatures. Um, but anyway, bats I worked on were New World fruit bats, which are a little strange looking. Zach, could you put up the picture I gave you? All right, so here are some tent-making bats. I took this picture the last time Heather and I were in the Amazon, um, these guys are tiny little bats, like 10 grams a piece. And you see they have fleshy little appendages on their noses. Those appendages do not have any bone in them. Those appendages, when you hold one of these animals in your hand, the, flat, the nose leaf uh, jitters back and forth very uh, remarkably. Um, if you watch bat mothers tend to their offspring, it's absolutely adorable, right? They're very, they have tiny numbers of offspring. Mothers will fly around with a bat uh, attached to them under their wing. And then when the animal is large enough that the mother can't fly with it, at the point that uh, the baby is more than 25% the size of the mother, they'll leave it in the roost and they'll come back and they'll um, ferociously clean its wings of parasites and things like this and uh, and feed the, the offspring. Anyway, they in really mammals, are. In mammals, a mother's care for her baby is universal. It is universal. Even in Centurio Cynex. Even, oh, you would bring up the. I did, yeah. Uh, Zach, please. would you show Centurio Cynex, the wrinkle-faced bat? Uh, you've got it upside down. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, uh, Google returned it to me upside down. It, oh, really? Yeah, Google, surprising, right? Google is in the dark, as it were. Um, so this animal... Um, it's, this is another phylostomatid, right? Uh, phylostomid, this yes. Is... It's a phylostomid okay. bat, um, fruit eater. And this animal eats fruits that it can't carry. So it kind of buries its face in a large fruit on the tree, which is probably why selection has purged the face of fur. Um, when this animal sleeps, it pulls a flap of skin over its face, and that flap of skin has two light spots in it, so it can see shadows through it. Um, it's not a handsome creature. No, um, no. It yeah. even hides from itself. It even hides from itself. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I guess my but, point I mean, would be in, this. In part two, um, I mean, you started, I, I showed a picture of flying fox. You started by saying the flying foxes are quite beautiful, um, but no one living in the new world ever sees those. Like right. they're, they're not here. And the, you know, one of the misnomers is that there's old world and new world bats. Um, and all the, all the so-called old world bats are these beautiful flying foxes. No, these, these, uh, these, uh, M micro bats, these echolocators are actually the vast majority of bats throughout the world, and there are only a few of the megabats um, that are that are quite beautiful, actually. But unless you're in the old world, which includes Australia and um, Africa uh, and some parts of South Asia, uh, you'll never run into them. Yeah, um, and e and even so, you know what you might run into is actually we did on one of our first trips to Madagascar is. Um, a tree full of them just beginning to wake up at night and you might effectively startle yourself so much that you embarrass yourself in front of the local people as we did. Never <laughs> happened. Never happened. Um, but anyway, the, the thing is, you don't have good access to bats in general, so you don't realize that all of the characteristics that make a creature endearing, you know, look, you probably think rodents are kind of creepy and gross, right? But then you realize squirrels are rodents and squirrels are actually tremendously engaging, highly intelligent, um, fun to watch. And I find bats are kind of like this too. There are some species that are creepy. I mean, vampire bats, now that's a creepy animal and it smells creepy. But a fishing bat is an amazing uh, 
animal that can basically detect the presence of fish. When fish come up to the surface to feed, they make a ripple. This bat can detect the ripple with an echolocation call, and it swoops in over the water and gaffs the fish. Um, this is an amazing, remarkable thing, and it's not creepy. It's fascinating. When you watch a fruit bat cleaning its young, it's endearing. And so anyway, I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that A, humans are sort of predisposed to be creeped out by things in the dark, and B, that our encounter with bats is often um, at a distance and sort of the jarring discovery that, oh, that's not a bird, um, but that close encounters with these things reveal that they are um, really interesting um, mammals that if flipped right side up and in the day, you would feel very differently about them. 